Welcome back. Uh, today's video is all about a film that I think should not be forgotten. Um, it's a film called Natural Born Killers. Some of you will have heard of this film, some of you won't. Uh, it was made in 1994, I believe. Uh, I watched it for the first time, I think, in the early 2000s, if I remember rightly and it, it completely blew me away of course. The, the film has a main theme and that is the way that the media turns serial killers into celebrities in order to gain ratings for their TV shows. I mean there are many themes in this in this film but that, that is the main one. It's about the, the media kind of using killers in that way to further their careers and uh, get ratings and stuff, right? Now, Natural Born Killers is uh, an Oliver Stone movie. Oliver Stone directed this film, but not many people know that the screenplay was actually written by Quentin Tarantino, who I also admire. And uh, it's, it's a great script. It's, it's an amazing film. I would describe this film as hallucinogenic satire. It, it feels like a dream. Well, this, this film is like a dream. It's, it's surreal. It's trippy. It, it's kind of, it's all over the place, but it works. The, all the way through the film, it's, it's packed full of imagery. It's packed full of clips clips and stills and you see these little in, in between scenes like these little clips pop up for a second it's almost like uh, subliminal imagery that's been put in there throughout the film uh, it switches from being color to black and white but only only for a minute or two different scenes I, I think there might be a like a hidden meaning here where it flips from black and white to color but I haven't quite worked it out yet I've watched this film about um, two or three times over the last few weeks. I've gotten really back into it. But uh, yeah, it's packed, packed full of stuff. It goes from black and white. And it's filmed in, in such a creative way as well. Like uh, the opening scene alone, you, they're, in a, they're in a cafeteria. Somebody fires a bullet from a gun and like you, the camera follows the bullet all the way to somebody's face and then all of a sudden it just explodes and he throws a knife at somebody and as the knife's swirling through the air you hear this, it all goes quiet except for this opera music and it's just such a really creative work of art. It's, it's, uh, it, oh, it's filmed in such a, a talented way. Oliver Stone is, is such a good director, just for this one film, I think. And, and also, um, the main two characters are Mickey and Mallory, if you don't know. Like, they're, they're two serial killers. One's a man, one's a woman, and they're a couple. They get married and they're like a duo, a serial killer duo. And uh, early on in the film, you're, you get a flashback to, to Mallory's childhood and how she first met Mickey. And the way it's done is amazing. It's Her childhood is presented in the form of an old TV comedy called I Love Lucy, which is, uh, which is an American show from like the 1950s, I think. And they present her childhood like that. And so you see the intro to I Love Lucy with the soundtrack and then her family are like characters in this TV show and you get this dubbed laughter in the background and it's all amazing. Again, it's like a dream. So creative. And uh, at the end of the film, I won't give away too much here, but if you're into prison riots in films, if you want to see a good prison riot, you, you cannot top this film. There's a, there's a prison riot at the end and it is absolute carnage for like 15 or 20 minutes as this prison gets turned upside down. It is incredible. The soundtrack is amazing. You can actually buy the soundtrack to this film. 
Uh, a lot, of, a lot of the songs in this film stick in your head for like a week after watching it. I know they have done with me. Some some great tracks on there, and it's well cast as well, which is always important. Woody Harrelson plays the main character, Mickey, and then you've got Juliette Lewis playing Mallory, who, who I think is great. Uh, she was in Cape Fear as well, of course, and she was in uh, From Dust Till Dawn. Uh, she's been in some good films, well cast, and, and also the the media sleazeball is played by Robert Downey Jr., who does a great job, and there's like this slimy prison governor who's played by uh, Tommy Lee Jones. He plays the part very well, so it's well cast. I, th I think the reason this film is not well known is because uh, it got quite a bad reception on its release. Because it's really violent, because it's got all these violent scenes, people kicked off about it and they, they took it at face value and they didn't realise that it was satire. You know, a, a satire pokes fun at what it portrays. So that this film is violent, but it kind of, it's, it's more of a critique of, of the characters that it shows. But of course most people don't, don't realise that, do they? They see it as at face value. I think something similar happened with American Psycho, uh, with, with the novel and the film. Uh, American Psycho caused a big outrage, of course, and the fact that it was satire went over most people's heads. It's going to happen, isn't it? But um, it still has an important message, that's the thing. How about 94, so that's like, 20, it's like 27 years old now. But the film still has a very important message in this kind of media obsessed world that we live in now. That the media, you could argue that the media is even bigger now. Now that we've got social media and stuff, the message of this film is more powerful than ever. So I think everybody should watch this. Um, yeah, go out and go out and watch it. It's it's. How did some somebody describe this? Um, I watched a review and somebody described this film as being a vertical film rather than a horizontal one. And that's a good description. It's, it's, it just comes at you with all these clips, goes from black and white to colour, loads of subliminals in there and it's, it's chaos and, it, and it's, it's amazing chaos and you should watch it for that reason. Okay, so go out and buy it or watch it online if you can watch it online. I highly recommend it, okay? It's a great film and it's actually my top 10 films of all time. So there you go, Natural Born Killers. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe, by the way. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, one day I might actually get a decent amount of subscribers. So thanks for watching. Please come again and until my next review, Try to have a great day on this media-driven, satiric, surreal rock we call Earth. Goodbye.